Let's take a brief overview of the self-service portal and we'll come back and talk about the self-service portal in a later video when we talk about service requests. But the self-service portal is a SharePoint portal with a Silverlight overlay that's designed mostly for your end users to be able to submit service requests, submit incidents, and view the status of their incidents. So here on this main page, I can see the different service requests that are available. I could also have a link to incidents here. Or I can click create a request, this create a request button, which allows me to submit an incident directly through the self-service portal. Through the self-service portal, I also have access to the knowledge base. So I'm able to search our knowledge base for help and view knowledge base articles, or at least the parts of the knowledge base articles that are available to end users. Your knowledge base articles can actually be broken into both end user content and analyst content. So here I can view the end user content. I also have a My Request section, and the My Request section shows me any incidents or service requests that I am the affected user of. So this allows me to see any incidents or service requests that I'm the affected user of, see the current state, see any information that's been inputted in the action log. I can actually update my request from the cell service portal by typing something in and sending it back to the help desk. I also have the capability of sending an email back to service manager and it will automatically update my incident or update my service request as well. So this functionality allows the end user to see what's happening with their incident or their service request without having to call and ask someone at the help desk. As a help desk analyst, a, a technician in the field, I have the capability to go under my activities and see any activities that are assigned to me, such as manual activities that are tasks or review activities that are activities that I need to approve or reject. And I could, through the self-service portal, mark those activities as completed or vote on the, on the review activities. I can also use email to mark activities as completed or vote on review activities. The goal being, as soon as an activity is done, get it marked as completed rather than waiting for the technician to come back to their console at the end of the day. And this being SharePoint, you can do customizations to it. I can add more links here on the left-hand side. I have the capability to modify the look and feel. But this is going to be the main interface for your end users into Service Manager. If you require a web-based analyst portal for your analyst, then you'll want to look at GridPro which is a company that Infront partners with that provides a web-based portal for Service Manager. And if you look at this portal, I am an Internet Explorer, but it looks exactly like the Service Manager console. And it has all the same functionality. I can access incidents. I can access change requests. I can access the CMDB. When I open up forms in this portal, the forms look exactly the same. If I edit forms or make changes to, say, the incident class in the instant form. Those changes will be automatically propagated into this web front end. So this is a great lightweight web front end into Service Manager that's designed more for your analysts. Where the self-service portal is designed for your end users, this is designed more for your analysts. Service Manager does have a knowledge-based system. By default, it's empty. It's designed for you to put your knowledge into it. You can access it through the library workspace. Your knowledge base articles can either be in a draft state, a published state, or an archive state. The draft state being it's still being worked on. Published means it's available. Archive means it's been archived. Only published knowledge base articles are available to your end users. If we open up a knowledge base article, you can see that it has a title, a description, you can specify keywords for searching, you can specify who the owner is, you can specify its category, and then you have the capability to specify both external content, which is say a URL to an external site, or maybe a URL into your internal SharePoint site. 
You can specify internal content. Notice this is a rich text edit field, so I can have images, I can bold, italicize, underline, and all that information. This internal content is what's available to your end user. There's also an analyst tab, and on the analyst tab is where you can have information that's only available to your analysts. So you can have your knowledge base can be broken into end user information and analyst information. You can gather feedback, so anyone who opens up this knowledge base article through the service manager console has the ability to provide feedback. You can gather that feedback and see it on the feedback tab. You can see any work items that this knowledge base article has been related to or configuration items. And of course, we're able to track the history of all the changes to this knowledge base article.